Wow. Is it really time for another trilogy review? Well, hell yeah it is. This time, I'm going to be covering the original Donkey Kong trilogy for the Super Nintendo. Because, you know, the Super Nintendo is my favorite system of all time. So why not? Also, because this is a series overview, I won't be going into much detail as I would if I reviewed each game on its own, but I'll try to cover most of the bases. The year is 1994. The system? The Super Motherfucking Nintendo. A little company from England called Rare decided to try something a little different with a the game they were working on, and it went down in the history books as one of the most memorable, replayable, and best enjoyed games on the Super Nintendo, as well as one of the most fun trilogies of the fourth generation of game consoles. The Donkey Kong Country Trilogy. Let's start at the beginning. There are many facets to this game that make it memorable, in many gamers' minds. Straight off the bat, you'll realize that Rare decided to forego using sprites for its characters and enemies. Instead, it uses pre-rendered 3D objects, giving it its unique look. Being the first game in the series, there were many standards set with its release. Not pushing aside the great graphics, you'll also have the gameplay itself. Running, jumping, bouncing, throwing, rolling, and riding secondary pets. The control for the most part is spot on. I have found sometimes though, that during very fast running parts, stopping near a ledge or a cliff can be slightly slippery. I've never been able to figure out if this is the game or just me. The story is simplistic enough. One day, Donkey Kong's banana horde is stolen by a gang of Kremlins basically alligators, led by King K. Rule. It's up to Donkey Kong and his nephew Diddy Kong to traverse the island's different climates and settings in a journey to get them all back. Along the way you'll face rainy jungles, snow-covered mountains, dank and dark caves, and swimming through deep underwater caverns. During the course of the game you'll also come across a few other fellow Kongs to help. Cranky Kong usually gives you helpful advice, and also scolds you for being too reckless. Funky Kong functions as the fast travel hub, allowing you to quickly fly from different sections of the island. Candy Kong is the save function in this game, which really sucks because a lot of the time when I'm playing through it, there is the possibility of continually dying on a stage that might just be in front of a save point, but you end up not reaching it and having to continue from a previous save point. While both characters appear on screen at all times, the game also features a two-player mode as well, allowing a friend to control Diddy Kong or Donkey Kong while you play as the other character. Now, there is no way I'm going to do a review of the first game in the series without talking about the music. The soundtrack for the game is phenomenal. From the upbeat opening level track to the dark and mysterious cave levels, from the victory theme to one of my most favorite pieces of music ever in a video game. Yes, I'm referring to Aquatic Ambience. This piece of music is heard during the underwater levels and has become many a fan favorite. Let's listen for a minute. It's probably my favorite piece of music from any game on the Super Nintendo. Along your journey, you'll find various animals that you can ride, with each having different abilities. There's Rambi, who can kill any enemy, Expresso, the ostrich, who allows brief moments of flight, and Engard, the swordfish, who is found in the underwater levels. 
There are a few others, but these are my favorite. You also collect bananas scattered about, and getting a hundred of them nets you a 1-up. Monkey head balloons also give you a 1-up. Collecting the K, O, N, and G letters for each stage is also a 1-up. At certain points in the stages there are secret rooms, usually revealed by throwing an item at a wall or jumping into a hidden barrel. These lead to bonus areas with more bananas and other helpful items. Your main attack in the game is either bouncing on an enemy's head if you're playing as Donkey Kong, or rolling into them if you're Diddy Kong. There's also a fairly good amount of throwable weapons in the game as well, such as steel barrels and crates of TNT. The bosses for the most part are no big deal, usually either bouncing on their head or throwing something to injure them. Nothing too challenging. The game was ported to the Game Boy Advance in 2003, and featured a multitude of changes including more game modes, graphic overhauls, and other various changes. You play through the various parts of the island, and at the end, you face off against King K. Rule. A pretty easy fight, and that brings the end of the game. Overall, a fantastic start to the series, and it really showed just how great a games company Rare was, even then. So here we are now, a year later, in the sequel. Now, since I've never really been into the two sequels of the first game, the next two parts will be mostly informationally based, and not nostalgia memory based as the first game is. Released in 1995, Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest continued on the standard set by the first game, and set some new ones as well. Now, before I totally delve in, let's touch on a certain topic, the title of the game. For years, and depending on who you were having a conversation with, would determine what you said. The title for this game is Diddy's Conquest. It is not Diddy Kong's Quest, which I will freely admit I referred to for years until I learned better. When you think about it, it makes more sense. I mean, both titles work. But even though I know the real title, I still catch myself saying Diddy Kong's Quest because I think most people just find it more natural instead of the real title. The storyline picks up shortly after the conclusion of the first game. Donkey Kong has been kidnapped by Captain K. Rule. Yeah, never heard that one before. And is demanding that Diddy turn over his banana hoard in return. So Diddy and newcomer Dixie Kong set off to retrieve Donkey. The layout of the game is much like the first one. You move around a larger map screen, selecting levels as you go. Also, much like the first game, both characters are on the screen at the same time, with the player being able to switch between them as they want. Each character has their own abilities and strengths. Diddy has a faster moving speed, and Dixie can float when in midair, much like Princess Toadstool in Super Mario Bros. 2. There are many new additions to this game in terms of bonus items and whatnot. There are Kremlin coins, which are collected per one level, and banana coins, which are used to purchase power-ups and play a variety of mini-games. There are the bee barrels, which lead to a hidden bonus round. If all of them are found, it unlocks a special world at the end of the game, much like completing the Star Road in Super Mario World takes you to the special zone. Series regulars like Cranky Kong and Funky Kong also return in their respective roles. They are joined by newcomers Wrinkly Kong, which functions as Candy Kong in this game, allowing you to save your progress, and Swanky Kong, who runs the minigames. Along the way, the rideable pets make their return as well. Rambi and Guard and Squawks are all here. New to the lineup is Rattly, the rattlesnake, who functions basically like Winky the frog from the first game, and Squitter the spider, who can shoot webs, Clapper the seal, who changes the temperature of things, and Glimmer the Anglerfish, who can illuminate darker areas of the stage. The soundtrack was once again composed by David Weiss of Rare, and the quality is still the same. From upbeat jungle jams to moody atmospheric tracks. Unfortunately, I really didn't have a standout track from the game as did from the first one. Overall, Diddy's Conquest is a great sequel to the original game, and Rare was basically on fire at this point in their company's career. It's not one of my favorites, nor do I play it a lot, but it's still a good game overall. We come to the last release in the trilogy, 
Donkey Kong Country 3 Dixie Kong's Double Trouble. Released on the Super Nintendo in 1996, it came out nearing the end of the system's life cycle, with the original PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and Nintendo 64 already on the market and ushering in the fifth generation of video game consoles. Much like the second Donkey Kong Country, I never really got into the third game either growing up. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was at the video store and whatnot. But when you had other games for newer systems also there, chances were pretty good that you would have picked up Super Mario 64 over this title most likely. This was also a time for me personally, where I started to notice a shift. From more, from more of the kind of kitty games to more mature titles. Games where the storyline and the characters started to matter more than flashy graphics or catchy music. Donkey Kong Country 3 was released during a time frame where I assume a lot of my other fellow gamers started to go through this transition as well. Never mind, I still play Super Nintendo to this day, but it was just different back when you were growing up, I guess. Ergo, just like the last game, the majority of this section will be information based. Donkey Kong Country 3 is also an important release, because this would be the last game in the Donkey Kong Country series, aside from Donkey Kong 64, until Nintendo had Retro Studios relaunch the series, 14 years later. On a basic level, no pun intended, Donkey Kong Country 3 functions pretty much like the previous two releases. There really isn't major improvements or standouts. You play as Dixie Kong, returning from the second game, and new to the series is Kitty Kong. The majority of almost everything else is carried over from Donkey Kong Country 2. Okay, the overworld map functions differently in that you aren't strictly limited in where you go between levels, for the most part. The storyline is as follows. If you can follow it, that is. Ah, fuck it. Basically, Dixie and Kitty take the roles of Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong from the first game. There's the plot. Same thing. I think it's one of the main reasons why I fell out of touch with the series after the first game. Because Rare didn't truly put the same amount of effort into the second and third games, because they were still riding the buzz about the first game. I mean, sure, each one adds a little bit of new things here and there, but on the whole, doesn't, dr doesn't drastically alter the formula from the first game to the other two. This can be seen as both negative and positive. I mean, on one side, you could say that the formula worked so well in the first game, why change major things about it? Horizontally, the two sequels could be looked at being boring, because they didn't change enough. Case in point, me personally, I always go back and play the first game, still to this day. Haven't played the other two in maybe 20 years, except to record footage for this review. This is how little the sequels stand out to me. Yes, I know and completely understand that there are many of you out there that disagree with me, and have much different memories of the series as a whole. These are just my thoughts, and obviously shouldn't be taken as fact, record, or any other kind of historical data. David Weiss composed the soundtrack, but again, like the previous game, there really aren't any standouts for me. Don't get me wrong, the music isn't bad, by any measure, but it's pretty hard to top aquatic ambience when that's on the first game. Just like the previous games, Donkey Kong Country 3 also received a port on the Game Boy Advance, with added features and musical differences. Overall, the Donkey Kong Country trilogy is a fantastic series of games whether you play the originals on the Super Nintendo or the newer versions on the Game Boy Advance. They're a great example of how a single game company, if given enough leeway, can create something truly original and can create a lasting effect on the video game industry as a whole. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, go check them all out. Don't forget to check out my Twitch account for live shoot 'em up action, my real time playthrough videos, Main Mondays, and other fun gaming videos as well.